Hi, this is Brad. How you doing today? Down here in Denver, out here in the beautiful sunshine. Beautiful. Oh my, it feels so good. It's nice and warm. Uh, gonna shoot a little bit of a video here, maybe a couple, three of them. And uh, we got an old hatchet here. You've seen it in the videos before. And uh, it got left out, I don't know, maybe two, two and a half months, something like that. Uh, it is a little bit rusted. And uh, we've been getting questions about or uh, you know comments would you please take the rectangle and use it and show some close-ups and show how to hold it show how to use it um, you know some kind of in-depth up close personal uh, you know usage of the rectangle so let's take uh, one of my uh, little uh, props here and um, work on it and it is kind of rusty I'll hold still here and kind of zoom in on it it has been left out and uh, that rust on the side, of course, doesn't do much, but if you actually have rust on the cutting edge, then you lose some of the ability for it to cut. And we've been asked to do the rectangle, so let's go ahead and do the rectangle. And uh, I'm going to hold it like this, like I do all of them if I'm going to work on a hatchet or an axe. <coughs> okay, the, the uh, rectangle would be held about this far back, about uh, from the cutting edge of the sharpener. Okay, out here to my thumb is going to be about three quarters of an inch. Don't come back here like this. Don't come up here close. Don't put your fingers up here. Just like that, it actually just kind of sets on my finger right there. All right, and so now it's it's more solid. If you come back here, that would be hard to hang on to it and do it right. All right, so we're actually just going to put it about there in the second knuckle like that. Take a hold of it. And I'll turn it just a little bit. I don't actually have it like this. It's more like this, okay, on my finger. And no big grip like that. No white knuckles, no white thumbnails, you know. So let's go ahead and see. Uh, we'll just go along like this. And pretty soon you'll see the shine really starting to come on where I'm taking the rust off the blade and then go right on around this way. And you're going to have to keep it... Uh, about like that around 10 degree bevel okay don't tip it up like this trying to get to the cutting edge i'm going to hold still it'll look like this i'm on the 90 degree corner there's two 90 degree corners so there's a 90 degree corner right there and then if i tip it over there's a 90 degree corner on that side so i can actually go out this way or i can turn it over and go back this way which is what i did right in the beginning then turn it over and do this all right, just like that. Don't press too hard, let it work. Don't make it work. I don't sharpen going back, I sharpen going out. So I actually lift it up, move it, 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 just like that. And then go right on around this way, right off that corner. I can come back this way, like this. All right, and then I'm gonna turn it over and I'll go ahead and support it just a little bit on the arm of the chair go right on out this way right now I'm using this corner right here going that way I'm going towards the handle I pick it up I move it I set it down and uh, slide it towards the handle do the same thing here I can turn it over and do this don't press too hard let it work don't make it work I am going to press just a little bit harder and make it cut a little bit just like this right on out come back this way out there now we turn it over and i'm just going to start polishing the blade a little bit there is a wire edge that will develop that little tiny micro burr that will develop while you're sharpening and you, if we're going to slice paper you got to get rid of that if you're going to go chop wood doesn't make any difference just like that that little tiny burr a little wire edge will take care of itself as you chop wood but if we're gonna slice paper, you gotta get that off of there because the little tiny burr will drag on that paper and make it to where you don't cut so good. So let's see now. Uh, we got uh, a magazine here that's like the Denver Magazine. And that's probably about, about right for thickness. So, yeah, we'll just tear off some of it. All right, and then we'll see how it works. Um, okay, that's not too bad, really. That's pretty sharp. For, for as far as <laughs> uh, splitting kits, that's cool. Uh, for as far as splitting kindling, 
and uh, chopping wood, chopping trees, chopping limbs, chopping things like that. Uh, if you need to chop the head off a chicken, I'm sure it'll do that. And we just go right on along. Okay. And, oh my, that really hangs on. You can see how it grabs my finger and sticks. So let's do what everybody likes to do. Let's do a little bit of fingernail. Oh my God, that catches. And I'm not pressing very hard because when they're that sharp, it will just rip the fingernail right off. So I'll hold still. And then you can see the fingernail on there. There's about five places there. That's plenty sharp. So there's a good example of how I use this on a hatchet. Uh, if we're gonna use it on a knife, let's say we're gonna use it on an inside radius, like this hawkbill knife right here. All right, the hawkbill has an inside radius that's really hard to sharpen, but we still use the same corners. There's one right there. There's one over there. They're 90 degree corners. That's really easy to figure out. It's just a 90 degree corner on both sides. So we told it like this and then just go right down through there. We're gonna use the corner on the cutting edge, approximately a 10 degree bevel. I'm gonna go ahead and let my leg be the support here. And then go right on around the radius, right off the point of the blade, just like that. Turn it over and do the same thing. Okay, again, I'm about, for the back of the, of the rectangle, it's in the second knuckle right there, in that crease. And just like this, not like this right straight out, but kind of with the corner of it like that. That puts this at the correct angle to use it easily right on around that radius and right there off the point of the knife, just like that. Turn it over. You can come back this way if you choose to. That's okay too. You can go out there. Then in the end, we're going to polish the blade a little bit. So we flip it every pass. I'm just using the corner, 90 degree corner, light pressure. And now I'm running about 90 degrees to the blade. In other words, that would be 90 degrees to the blade. That would be about a 45 to the blade. So I run about 90. When I'm taking the little burr, the burr off the wire edge, okay, just like that, because you have to kind of disrupt the cut pattern. So just like that. And let's see what we got now for an inside radius on a karambit. Oh my God. That is just right on the verge of sharp. Uh, you you got to love it. You, you just got to... I always get a big smile on my face when we do that because after I mess with a knife, there's not a whole lot of chance that I'll mess it up. I just make it sharper. But when it really is sharp like that, it's such a gratification, you know, it's gratifying to know that you sat there and hand sharpened with a 90 degree corner, not a whetstone, not a Lansky, not uh, ceramics or diamond impregnated or anything like that. It's something as simple as a 90 degree corner and you actually accomplish that for sharp with a 90 degree corner, makes you feel pretty good. Uh, so let's see um, this one right here. And that's uh, fairly sharp. Let's look and see. Okay, I can make it cut pretty good right out to the tip. This is actually one of the knives that I think I worked on before. When I look at it, I can tell whether I worked on it or not. Uh, and I do not think that is factory edge. It, it's close to factory edge, but um, I'm sure it's not factory edge. So again, we do about a 10 degree bevel on it blade and that would be about like this. All right, and that would be 90 to the blade. We run, run 45 like that and then around like this. And just like this on a 10 degree bevel to the uh, blade. If you run 10 degrees, that's 20 inclusive. So if you take 10 on this side, 10 on this side, and you look at the bevel uh, overall, it's going to be 20 degrees. A lot of people say 20, 25. Uh, I've sharpened about everything that I own at uh, approximately 20. Um, I have found that to work well in the woods when I'm chopping with my butcher knives. Um, it holds uh, well on a pocket knife like this. So just like that, and I'll slow down a little bit so you can see. My thumb is about three quarters of an inch from the flat here, back to my thumb. My index finger like that. My middle finger is actually touching my thumb. So this is kind of rigid and just kind of, you know, out there. It would look like this on your side. 
and then we'll just move along. I'll do it in real time. So just like this, we don't press hard. We let it work, don't make it work. Turn it over, about 10 degree bevel off of the blade. In other words, that would be parallel, and I'm in the shade, I'm sorry, uh, like that. And about 10 degree bevel up like this. All right, now we come back around here, and I'll get like this, more in the sun, more in the light for you, just like that. And now we flip it over. Okay, now we're just gonna touch it light, light, light. Flip the knife every pass, real light. Just touch it lighter and lighter and lighter until you just, just touching it as light as you can. About 20, between 20 and even 30 touches, 15 on each side, something like that. That bites. That's smoother. People say push test. Well, that's what I'm doing. I just slide it through the paper like that and then right out to the tip, like that. Uh, let's see if we can tease it right on out there like that. Okay. <laughs> if you can cut radiuses, that's pretty darn sharp. Okay, so that's definitely a success. This is the one that I carry. Uh, it's actually a Chinese knife. It's extremely well made. It's 440 stainless. Um, it's just solid. It's a good knife. Um, I think I bought this down at Smoky Mountain Knife Works in, Virginia, in uh, Tennessee. And um, I believe, if I remember right, it was only about $14. And it has proven to be a pretty darn good knife. Um, it doesn't have uh, the trapper style blade. I'm not going to, I don't, never open the other blades on a knife. This actually has four blades in it with one of them open because if you slip, especially with my knife, and your, and your knife is actually sharp like that, if you run your finger down that blade even slightly, you're going to get cut. So let's close that one, open up the smaller one take this one the other direction okay and then there's another one over here and here so I'm going to close this one open this one up all right which is like that one only it's got the the rounder okay so let's go ahead and close these two and I'm not going to flip the knife over there's a smaller blade right there I hang on to them. I pinch them tight because I don't slip at all because my knives are sharp. Now that blade, I don't... Oh, it's sharp, but not as sharp as the rest of them. Okay, that isn't too bad. So let's touch it up just a little bit. Uh, that that blade, I don't really do too much with. Um, it has four blades on it, so it's kind of uh, hard, actually, to go and use the other blades. Especially if you have a knife sharpener in your pocket. You pick your favorite blade, you do your cutting, you take your sharpener that's in your pocket... You touch up the blade, tune it up, make it sharp again, and therefore you don't actually have to go uh, to the other blades and use them. I can get away with a one-bladed knife, actually, as long as you don't break that blade. Okay. Now, that blade is a little thicker than the others. That's the blade that I would probably use if I had to do some hard work. And again, we have the test here that everybody kind of likes to see. It just catches instantly and takes the thumbnail right off. So this is Brad, sharpensbest.com. There's a little tutorial just using the rectangle. And uh, the rectangle does have the V-notch. The V-notch is used for reshaping kitchen knives. If you're very gentle and careful with it, you can take a, a knife and run it through there easily. I'm gonna move down here. You would set it down there and then touch it really light like that if you're going to use it on a pocket knife or hunting knife throughout my videos you'll see that I suggest all the time that I don't use that um, on a really cheap knife and you're in a hurry and you don't really care about it eh, maybe you go ahead and use it but not really my recommendation so that's the uh, three knives and the hatchet the rectangle and uh, we'll do a, a closer up slower specific tutorial on the other sharpeners people have asked to slow down closer film get up tighter use it more specific talk about how i'm using it uh there are six sharpeners now um, so there's the rectangle some people call it the square it's obviously rectangle 
This is Brad Buckner, SharpensBest.com, coming to you live from Denver, Colorado. You take care and stay sharp out there.